how are you all i hope you are doing great because we are working very hard for you i ankita sharma welcome you here at the vedantu in this beautiful series of sessions we'll be discussing about cbse textbook that is for your class 8th we'll be going chapter wise chapter in different sessions discussing all the concept in a one go you will be excited and i am excited too to do these all things i assure you that you will enjoy this whole process because we have lot of surprise for you and lots and lots of learning so without wasting your time let's see what we have today but just to begin there i'll just introduce myself my name is ankita sharma i'm a biology teacher here at vedantu i've been teaching icse and cbse board class 9 to 12 and the experience is awesome so let's see what we have today in this particular class so today we'll be discussing about crops now crops of course you will be thinking what is crop ma'am just hold there we will be discussing what that particular thing in this session only but here we'll be discussing about the crops and different types of crops that are present in our country now let's just get into the learning mode what you have today in the morning if i ask you you'll be like now we have idli we have dosa we have paratha we have puri we have lot of things great now these all things that we usually have what it gives us it gives us energy energy to do work energy to move energy to talk energy to play etc etc so the important thing here for us to know that that food gives us energy and here we have lots of beautiful food that we eat every day now when i'm talking about the food what will happen what will happen we feel like eating more food and we then think okay if i want to have pizza i can call the dominos or if i want to have poha i can go and tell my mother to cook it but have you ever thought that from where from where these resources are coming from where the poha is coming or from where the wheat or the rice that we have in our daily basis are coming to solve that particular question and to just control all the emotions and to know from where these things are coming we'll be studying this particular thing foods come from the two different sources as of course they are they are vegetarians and they are non vegetarians we both are the one who eats like humans are the omnivores so we have plants also and we have animals also so there are two different types of resources first plants and the animals so as we can discuss here in detail plants actually obtain the food with the help of a sunlight the process called is the photosynthesis plants make their own food with the help of a sunlight by the process called photosynthesis a very important term so we have clicked and checked one very important question here that is nothing but the photosynthesis now plants make their own food so that's why they're called as autotrophs very important term children very important term they are called as autotrophs they synthesize their own food on the other hand we have animals which basically feeds on these particular plants which are dependent on the plants for the food this particular type of animals which are dependent on the plants for their food are called as heterotrophs okay two important very important terms that we have discussed it now let's have a brief revision first autotrophs they make their own food with the help of sunlight second we have heterotrophs which actually are dependent on the plants for their food so there are two different types autotrophs and heterotrophs are you clear with it hopefully that you are clear with it moving on ahead now we know that we have a very clear picture that we eat from both plants and from the animals and this particular cartoon is enjoying its food like none other to ponder a thought have you ever thought that there are huge population okay every one of us are increasing in number and the food which has been produced do you think is enough for all the population it's a question that we should ponder on 
With that question only, let's go into the story mode. And story is waiting for all of us. Let's see what the story is. A beautiful story of mankind. So, as I'll say, once upon a time, during an ancient age, where there were very few humans and there were huge number of animals. These humans, or we can say tribal people or ancient people, used to do the hunting. They were there and they will be moving out for the animals. They want to eat them because they don't know any other source of food. So what happened? They were there and hunting them. Slowly, slowly what happens? Their population increases. Can you see the number of the people in the picture is increasing. So what happens with the time? Of course, the animal is still there. The population is increasing. Slowly, slowly what will happen? The animal will get reduced. Why? For example, we are living in an area. <coughs> a very common example I will be giving you. You are living in an area and you have a great water supply. Very great water supply. But what happened? There is a lot of construction going on. A lot of development is going on. Then there are a lot of flats around you. But what is happening? The water supply that you are having will be divided. That will be going to the other places also. So sometimes you might feel there is some bit of lack in the water supply. That is nothing but due to the overpopulation. That was happening during that time when the people were hunting the animals and the number of animals is getting reduced. So they have a thought, why not find an alternative way of eating or any other source of food? So what happened? They found an alternative source of food and that is nothing but the farming. During the back old days, once the animals were getting reduced in number, these ancient people switched back to the farming. Switching back means they got into the real terms with the reality. They got settled down. Can you see? They got settled down and they started doing the farming. They start actually having animals as their pet. We have a dog here, we have a cow here, etc, etc. So what happened? The human mind, the great mind, did a very great discovery, established themselves at particular land and start growing crops or we can say plants till now. Now what are these things that are growing on a large scale? These are nothing but these are called as crops. So let's see that beautiful definition over here. When the plants of the same kind are cultivated at one place, on a large scale are called as crops. Very, very important definition that can usually come for one marks. Just imagine on a large scale when you're growing a similar kind of plant that is called as crops. Now in the examples we have given a different types of crops. We have wheat, we have rice. Apart from it we can add maize, groundnut, peas and the list is endless. So, now we are clear about the crops, okay? We are clear up to here. Now, let me ask you a question. It's a very easy question. Do answer that. Very good, you can write in the chats. Definitely, and you can answer in the comment section also that what is the right answer? And I'm 100% sure that maximum of you are going for the right answer, that is, is the crops. The same amount, the same kind of plant grown and cultivated on the large scale at a place is called as crops. Now, we know what are crops. But the very important question that I want to ask you is that are you eating mangoes now in summer? The answer should be yes, 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 yes. We are eating mango now. Why? Because mango is a seasonal fruit. And from seasonal fruit, I want to tell you something. Do you eat mango in the winters? Probably the answer will be no. No, because mango is not available during in the winters. And why is it so? Because it requires certain set of temperature, rainfall and humidity for it to grow. Confused? Don't get confused. We'll have the answer here. So what happens in our country? We have this beautiful country that we call India. And you must be familiar that Throughout the country, we have different sets of climate throughout the years or seasons. In winters, north part is very chill, very, very cold. It's the temperature goes up to 
minus 5, 0, etc, etc. In south, it's pretty much humid and hot throughout the year. The Rajasthan is extremely, extremely hot during summers. And in the east, there's beautiful rainfall. So we have a certain different sets of variety of the climate in our country. This particular climate gives us the variety of crops that we usually have. We have winter's crop, we have summer's crop, etc, etc. And these crops are completely dependent on three very important factors. What are those important factors are? As you can see on the screen, they are temperature, rainfall and humidity. These three factors contribute towards the production of this different types of crops that we have during the different different seasons. Now, if you know that, that there are different seasons, you must be familiar with the term that there are different different crops also based on different types of season. Right? Yes, we have Kharif crops and we have Rabi's crop. The definition says that or it says that the plants are classified into two different types or the crops are classified into two different types based on the season. Kharif and Ravi. So, what are Kharif crops? Can you see this image? This is nothing but the groundnuts and this is nothing but the rice or we can say paddy. What is it? Crops which are sown in the rainy season. Rainy season in India is between June to September are called as Kharif crops which are sown during the rainy season are called as the Kharif crops. Examples are mentioned here. First, most easy example paddy or also the rice, we have maize, soya bean, ground nuts, etc. So, Kharif crop are the one which are sown during the rainy season in India. So, what do you think the Rabi crop will be? Do you think they will be similar? Let's see. The crops growing in the winter season, that is from October to the March, are called as the Rabi crop. And the examples are wheat, gram, pea, mustard, etc. So these are two different types of crops that we have. We have Ravi crop and we have Kharif crop. Are you clear up to here? Great. It's a very important and very easy thing for us to remember. So let's do some question solving. The question is, which of the following is an important factor for the growth of the plants? Temperature, rainfall, humidity or all of all? All the list, is it? Do tell me in the comment section what is the right answer. Let's see. Yes, all of the above things are equally very important for the crops to grow. That is temperature, rainfall and humidity. Let's see the next question. Which of the following is a Rabi crop? Can you tell me we have just studied now and it was very easy for us to remember. I'll give you three seconds. One, two and three. The correct answer is gram. Gram is the one which is, is a Rabi crop and others are the Kharif crops. Easy that was and great. So with this I end my class today. Hope you will be doing a lot of planting activities because a single plant that we plant gives us a lot of oxygen, gives lots of greenery and gives lots of peace to us. On that particular note, I say you goodbye. I will be seeing you in the next class. Do come and watch. Like the Vedantu channel and do tell us in comments how was the class. Thank you children. Good day. Bye.